Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Please silence your cell phone as we prepare for the Mass. Today we celebrate the most holy body and blood of Christ. Our presider today is Father Mike Guarino. Please join us in our opening hymn, Song of the Body of Christ. together this afternoon for Rita Flannery and Jane McCann. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all of the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of a mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, 
passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation. He entered once and for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousnesses from dead works so as to worship the living God, for this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as had been told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, the Gospel of the Lord. There's the story of a young Jewish boy who refused to go to school. At six years old, his mother took him to school, and all along he was crying and protesting. 
And after she left, he ran home. Well, once again, she brought him back to school, and this uh, went back and forth for days. And finally, the mother and father sat little Mordecai down and tried to reason with him, saying that at some point, all children have to go to school. Well, that just didn't do it. And then they used the old trick of combining threats and bribes, and that also didn't, it may, it was no avail. So finally they said, maybe we ought to bring him to the rabbi. So they went to the rabbi and they told him the situation. He said, the boy won't listen to words, bring him to me. So they brought little, little Mordecai into the rabbi's study. And without saying a word, the rabbi lifted little Mordecai up and he held him against his heart for a long time. And then in silence, he put him down. What words couldn't accomplish, a physical embrace did. Not only did little Mordecai decide to go off to school, but he became a very renowned scholar and a rabbi. That parable really explains wonderfully what the Eucharist is all about, what happens at the Eucharist. For at it, God lifts us up and holds us to his heart. He gives us a big embrace. In fact, in all the sacraments, God embraces us. We know that words have relative power, but in critical situations, very often words fail. But we have another language. We have the language of ritual. And the most ancient primal ritual is the ritual of embracing. It will say and do more than words ever can. Jesus acted on this. For most of his ministry, he used words. Through words, he tried to explain to us God's consolation, his challenge, his strength. But at a point, even though his words were so powerful, at a point, they also seemed to lose strength. So God had to do so, Jesus had to do something else. It needed something more. So on the night before he died, after expanding all of his words and they had done as much as they could do, he gave the Eucharist his embrace, his kiss, in it, as I say, he held us or held them to his heart. To my mind, that's probably the best understanding of Eucharist. You know, when I was in the seminary and even beyond that, I've had many long courses on the Eucharist and I have read on the Eucharist. But in the end, none of those things really explained it to me as powerful and as good as they were. The Eucharist, like a kiss, cannot be described. There is no description for it. If someone were to write a 400-page book on the metaphysics of a kiss, don't read it because a kiss just works. The inner dynamics don't need 
metaphysical explanation. The Eucharist is God's kiss. There was a, was a writer who said, without the Eucharist, God is just a monologue. And I think there's a lot of truth there. A while back, Brenda Peterson, in a work entitled In Praise of Skin, revealed how at one point she had a real, kind of a terrible uh, skin rash, and no medicine seemed to be able to soothe it. She went to all kinds of doctors and all, used all kinds of medicine to no avail. And then she went to her grandmother, remembering how when she was a young girl, whenever she had a rash or a bruise or some ailment, her grandmother would massage her skin. And that seemed to do the trick. Well, the ancient remedy worked again because the grandmother massaged the girl's skin over and over again. And what seemed that could never go away vanished. Skin needs to be touched. That's what the Eucharist does. That's why the Eucharist and all of the sacraments have a physical part to them. Whether it's laying on of hands, consuming the body of blood of Christ in the form of bread and wine, being immersed in water, anointed with oil. A physical embrace or an embrace needs to be physical. It can't just be something that we imagine. Gilbert Keith Chesterton once said, wrote, that at a certain time of day, a young child tires of playing cops and robbers. And it's at that time that he, he begins to torment the cat. And most mothers who have young children know that hour, have experienced that, and know the whole dynamic of what goes on at that time. You know, it's usually around supper time, and the child loses its energy, and it's crying. And what it does finally is, it is, it's lost his energy, it's crying, and it just kind of grabs on to the mother's leg. And at that point, mother knows exactly what to do to lift up that child. And when she does, the child calms, and the tension just goes out of its body. I think that's a good image of the Eucharist. You know, we're the ones now who are overwrought and tense and perennially tormenting the cat. And even God, at times, his words aren't enough. He knows that at times we need a physical embrace. He knows that, and that's why Jesus gave us the Eucharist. Please join me in profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In preparation for the bread of life and cup of salvation, let us call on the name of the Lord in prayer for the needs of the world. That the church on earth may be drawn together to reflect the perfect unity of the Trinity, the community of divine love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For nations who do not have enough bread to feed their people and do not have the luxury of sharing wine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those who are slaves to fear may find the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer that our departed brothers and sisters may be raised into the glory of the Holy Trinity, especially Philip Michael LaSalle, who recently passed away. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For Rita Flannery and Jane McCann, whom we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we offer our prayers, draw us into the communion of the Spirit who dwells in your children and the Son, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as 
we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the Eucharistic offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer each other safely a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
I don't think we thank our musicians enough. They do so much to make our Eucharist uplifting, and we just thank you so much and stay with us forever. <laughs> I know I mentioned this last week, and I'm going to mention it again. I don't want to be a nudge, but uh, if someone wants to receive communion on the tongue, there is absolutely no problem. We'd we'll love to have you do that but we ask that you go to the end of the line. And the reason for that is the diocese has given us instructions that if somebody comes and they're not at the end of the line and we give them communion on the tongue, then we have to come up, put our ciborium down, we have to uh, sanitize our hands again before we start giving communion. And that's the laws of the diocese. So if you want to receive on the tongue, you're more than welcome, but we just ask you the be at the end of the line. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen. One day a wife said to her husband, Honey, why do you always speak so softly? It's almost like a whisper. And he says, well, I'm always afraid that somebody's listening in. Well, she laughed, and he laughed, and Siri laughed, and Alexa <laughs> laughed. <laughs> always a tough act to follow. So. Just a couple of announcements today. On uh, Wednesday, it's coming Wednesday, June 9th, we will be filming Masses for the Homebound for the Diocese of Venice, starting at 10.30 a.m. We need some folks to show up and be the parish. <laughs> so if you could be present uh, for either, any of those Masses that day, that would be great. We expect, um, because these are shorter Masses, it will be done by noon, so an hour and a half. And there are details in the bulletins. We will celebrate our Father's Day triumph beginning um, June 20th, and you'll see as you leave um, at the doors there are cards for you to pick up um, so that you can um, have Mass said for your dads and grandfathers and other important men in your life. There will be a Zoom meeting this uh, week on Tuesday, the June 8th at 7 p.m., and again, um, in, there's some more information in the bulletin and on the flock notes email that you should be getting. Um, and if you are planning to attend Father Michael's um, celebratory mass for the anniversary, 40th anniversary of his ordination and reception um, on uh, Saturday, June t um, 19th, please contact the parish office. And again, there's more info in your um, bulletin and you're all welcome to join. And finally, last but not least, please remember to take your blue worship aids with you. Thank you.
And now we're closing him is I heard the voice of Jesus saying.